So we start lecture 72, the final lecture on the ant colony optimization. And today I will discuss the ant system. So we will lay some of the quantitative groundwork for the ant colony optimization method. And I am Dr. Ranjan Ganguly. Now in the ant system, the pheromone values are changed by all the ants that have completed the tour. And the pheromone value tau, tau ij is changed according to this formula. So you can see here the 1 minus rho tau ij term. And this term is now a simpler term. k is 1 to m delta tau ijk, where k refers to the ant number k and m is the total number of ants. So this is the formula used to change the tau ij. So again looking at this formula, rho is a number between 0 and 1, which essentially simulates the process of the pheromones slowly vanishing from the paths. m is the number of ants, so the sigma here is on the number of ants. Tau ij for ant k is the quantity of pheromone which is deposited by the kth ant on the edge ij. So remember the edge ij connects cti and ctj. Now if ant k used edge ij in its tour, then this delta tau ij k would be 1 by l k, where l k is the tour length of the kth ant. If it didn't use this edge, then this delta tau would be zero. Now, when the ants move along the graph, they have to make a probabilistic decision at each vertex, which corresponds to the city. And this transition probability of the kth ant moving from city i to city j is given by this formula here. So this is the probability that you choose cij path and again this is a tau into the heuristic value and this is the summation on this particular quantity so if j is a subset of n skp then you choose this probability if it's not then you choose the probability to be zero where n skp are the components which do not yet belong to the partial solution skp of and k and these two values alpha and beta are constants which essentially control the relative importance of the pheromone relative to the heuristic information the heuristic information is given by 1 by dij where dij is the length of the component cij, which is the same as the edge ij. Now you can see the ant system is simpler and more quantifiable than the ACO metaheuristic. In fact, it is one of the ACO metaheuristics. Now we are going to demonstrate how this ant moves around in a simple problem involving four cities. So here there is a problem involving four cities, A, B, C, D, and the ant essentially starts from this point B, then it moves to D, then it moves from D to A, then it moves from A to C, and then from C it moves back to B here. And then a new ant starts from A. So we are going to discuss how this entire process takes place in the ant colony optimization method. So this is a four city TSP, very simple problem. The ant starts out from a randomly selected city. So let's say the randomly selected city is B and random levels of pheromones are scattered throughout the lines in the graph which connect the city. At this point, the ant chooses a path based on the pheromone levels and the heuristic values which are related to distances and decides to move on a path. So since this is randomly scattered, 
this will come out as some random value so let's say that this ant decides to move on path bd so from city b to city d so essentially what the ant has done is it's moved from b to d so it's taken this particular path here so this is the path the ant has taken at this point and it has reached city d now after the ant has come to d the ant remembers that it started from point B or city B and therefore it's no longer going to visit B so it can visit A or C it has two possibilities now it uses the pheromone information and the heuristic data and the probability calculations to decide on this move and let's say it calculates the move along path DA so which means that the ant has decided to move from D here to A so this move on DA has been made by the ant based on the heuristic values, the pheromone level, as well as the probability calculation. Now the ant has landed up in A. Now from A, of course, the ant is not going to visit cities B and D where it has been before. So the ant has completed its visit to A, B, and D. It cannot visit these three cities once again. Now remember these are defined in the TSP problem. So it goes to city C using the path AC and completes its visit. Now final round it has to get back to its base and its base was city B. So it completes CB and it comes back to closing the loop it comes back to where it started from simulating the behavior of the salesman and once it has done this pheromones on all the paths which have been traversed by the ant are made more or more pheromones are put on this particular path so to illustrate these final steps the ant moves from d to a it moves from a to c and then it moves from C to B back. So that's the circuit that I traveled. It went B, D, A, C, B. So that's pretty much the optimal path we have also seen before for the four city problem. Now, once it's completed this, you add the pheromones. And as time goes by, some of this pheromone starts vanishing and of course a new ant comes in and this ant starts its own solution so let's say this ant is going to start from city a this is the new ant here so once the first ant has completed its circuit or closed path some vanishing of the pheromone will take place from all the paths the new ant then joins in it begins its tour it starts from a randomly selected city A. Now, of course, this ant has the advantage that the previous ant has laid down some pheromone on a certain path, and so it can decide based on this. But this pheromone is also slowly dissipating, so both these aspects are being combined together along with the heuristic value, which is telling it to favor paths of shorter length. Now you can see that there are a plethora of applications possible for this kind of method because in a huge number of methods you want to traverse the path of minimum distance. Whether you are doing any problem in transportation, whether it is by cars or by trains or by planes or by ships and also in various problems such as telecom networks and so on, wherever combinatorial optimization problems come up. Now, generally we can put some rules of thumb, like if you have continuous variable problems, then algorithms like PSO and real coded GA would probably work out better. However, if you have problems involving best path calculations, then the ACO is one of the best heuristic methods you can use. If you are interested in more information on ant colony optimization, there is a book by Dorigo and tools play you can consult this particular book for a great amount of detail on this particular method and also on the web you are going to find many resources on ant colony optimization 
Combinatorial optimization itself represents an important and difficult problem in optimization. We have barely touched the surface of this area. This area is quite difficult, but heuristic methods provide a way to get feasible and usable solutions, especially if you are an engineer looking for actual practical solutions to the problem. But there is a lot of theory and math behind here about trying to find the best possible solution or trying to develop mathematical theories around these problems. Now, we see that two main difficulties happen which provoked the development of the heuristic methods. One was multimodal problems where you have more than one minimum point. And in all these situations, gradient-based methods quickly reach to the nearest local minima. The second was the combinatorial optimization problems where you essentially have the minimum path type of problems where you have discrete design variables. And again here, traditional methods are not so useful and heuristic methods play a very big role in these kind of optimization. All these actually have led to the development of machine learning. And many of these thinking have helped in development of machine learning type of situations. So I will end this lecture here, lecture 72. And next lecture, we are going to review the stochastic optimization methods. See you then.